welcome to our review on the formulae of ionic compounds. So the first thing we're going to look at are some common ions and their formulae and we're going to start off with the positive ions. Now first and foremost we can have a look at hydrogen. So when hydrogen becomes an ion then the charge on that is plus one. So what we actually do when we're writing the actual formulae for it you use your capital H and then put a superscript little plus in the top right corner there. And this rule is going to hold true for any of the elements that we find in group one, which are on that far left hand column on the periodic table. So any element in group one will have a plus one charge as well. So written just like we've shown with sodium there, the Na as its symbol and then the little positive charge in the top right corner. If we consider group two, then we find they have a plus two charge in group three. They have a plus three charge. Now, what that tells us is that whatever the group number is, which is obviously just the column, and you can see there group one, group two, and then group three, just on the other side of the transition elements, then that charge there is going to be the same as the group number. So it's always a positive on the left hand side of the periodic table, and the actual number of positive charges is the same as the group number. If we consider the transition metals, which we find in that little section between group two and group three, then transition metals usually have a plus two charge. Two exceptions to bear in mind are silver and iron three. Moving on to think about the negative common ions we've got. Again, there's a simple rule that we can remember to help us to identify the charges here. So if we look at our group five elements, then they have a negative three charge. Group six have a negative two charge and group seven a negative one charge. So the way that we can actually work that out is very simply, you take the group number and then you take away eight from it. And whatever that gives you will be the charge on that particular ion. The next bit we're gonna consider are these ions called compound ions. Now all a compound ion is, is something made up of more than one element. Until this point, all we've done is look at the ones that occur on the periodic table. But we will find that there are some very common ions that we will encounter in our chemistry course that actually have more than one element associated. And these are shown in that little table there. So the ammonium ion, for example, has nitrogen and hydrogens. So it has the formula NH with the little subscript for because there are four hydrogens and it has a positive charge overall. And that charge applies to the whole of that compound ion. For the hydroxide, it's an OH minus, nitrate NO3 minus, the carbonate CO3 2 minus, and the sulfate SO4 2 minus. So remember that when we're talking about the compound ion, the charge applies to the whole of that actual structure. When we come to actually write ionic formulae, we must make sure that the positive and negative charges actually balance each other. So that that means that if we've got two positive charges on, say, a calcium ion, then we must have two negative charges from whatever the negative ion is. In the example I've given you here, we've got chloride ions. Now, chloride ions have a single negative charge. So to make sure that we've got the two negative charges, we must have two chloride ions. So that when you've actually worked out how many of each of those ions you need to balance the charges, when you come to write the formula, don't forget to include the little subscript number to represent the numbers of those particular ions present. So because in this example, we've got one calcium and two chlorides, then the formula we'd write is Ca for our one calcium, and then the Cl with the subscript two to represent the two chloride ions present. If we now consider the slightly more complex scenario of having a compound ion present, we still have to make sure those charges balance. So in the first example I've given you here, we've got our sodium, which has a single positive charge, and that's gonna be joining with a hydroxide ion, which has a single negative charge. So because we've got one positive and one negative, those charges are balanced, so the formula would just be NaOH. If, however, we have something like a group two element, then what we would have there are two positive charges. So here we've got calcium, which is obviously a two plus. Now, if we're still having that join with the hydroxide ion, each hydroxide only has one negative charge. 
So in order to balance the positive and negative charges, we'd have to have two hydroxide ions joining to the single calcium ion. So in that case, we'd have two positives and then the two negatives, one from each hydroxide. So when we actually come to write the formula for this, we write Ca just like we would normally, but then our hydroxide formula, the OH, has to go into brackets because we can't split it up. So we put it into brackets to surround the entire compound ion, and then the number that we needed goes in the bottom right just after the bracket. So just remember, you can't write it as CaOH with a little two without the brackets, because that formula would then say there's one calcium, one oxygen, and two hydrogens, and that's not possible. So remember, the compound ion must go into brackets, and the little number goes after the brackets.